All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the St. Croix Regional Session of Wisconsin Water Week. My name is Kate Wright, and I work for the St. Croix River Association, and I'll be your moderator today. Welcome to a look at conservation practice implementation on the St. Croix watershed. Our presenters will discuss their work for approximately 45 minutes, after which we will take questions from the audience. Be sure to type your questions in the Q&A section and upvote those questions that you would like to be answered the most. Uh, our presentation today features two distinguished speakers from the Natural Resources Conservation Service, or NCR, NRCS. Michelle Cliff is a NRCS soil conservationist assisting landowners in Barron County. As Southwest Wisconsin native, Michelle has a BS in Reclamation, Environment, and Conservation from the University of Wisconsin Platteville. Michelle is passionate about the unique ways that NRCS can bring conservation efforts to private landowners and enjoys working with the diverse landscapes in Northwest Wisconsin. Our other speaker, Dana Swanson, is an NRCS resource conservationist, assisting landowners in St. Croix and Polk counties. Dana grew up on a dairy farm in Southwest Wisconsin and has a BS degree in reclamation, environment, and conservation from the University of Wisconsin Platteville as well. She enjoys helping landowners meet their conservation goals. Please join me in welcoming our speakers. Over to you. Hey, hey everyone, I don't think you're live streaming on the right channel, so hold on one second. This is a look at conservation practice, right? Yes. Madeline. Can you check your credentials? You're good. Go ahead. I apologize. All right, um, no problem. Back to um, Michelle and Dana to kind of finish off this presentation. Okay. And you're, you have the right one. Uh, we're so just waiting here, Dana, uh, my colleague, she's in the back. She'll be transitioning my slides here. And she'll be hitting the presentation mode here to uh, provide the slides. So I'm just gonna wait for Dana here. You're, you're in. I think you're right. The presentation. All right. And everyone can hear me okay? Good. Okay. Uh, so, as Kate said, uh, for our introductions today. Um, I'm Michelle Cliff. I work in Barron County uh, for NRCS and then Dana Swanson will be joining me on the next presentation here and she'll be discussing uh, how conservation is implemented in the St. Croix watershed. Uh, so my presentation today, Helping You Help the Land, this is an introduction to the USDA uh, NRCS. Okay. So what is the Natural Resource Conservation Service? Uh, so today, a discussion on what NRCS is. So NRCS, uh, often referred to as uh, the technical agency of the USDA, is the primary, <clears throat> primary federal agency to help landowners protect soil, water, and natural resources. <clears throat> in Wisconsin, we have field staff based in 53 USDA service centers. We help landowners with technical and financial assistance. Uh, so agency beginnings. In the 1930s, America was in severe environmental crisis with dust bowls occurring that crossed the Great Plains due to drought cycles and farming practices that were not suitable. Erosion was occurring on a dramatic scale across the nation, including Wisconsin. 
uh, reference the photos here, Dust Bowl of the Great Plains. Uh, you can see here a photo of the dust storms that were uh, chronic across the Great Plains in the 1930s. Maybe less commonly known, devastating bank erosion occurring in Wisconsin watersheds. The photo here in Jackson County, which is the Black River Falls area, uh, the object in the middle of the photo there that is a man on a horse that shows the scale of some of the bank erosion that was occurring in Wisconsin, especially in the drift, driftless area. Uh, in 1933, the Soil Erosion Service was established. Uh, the service worked to conserve soil and reduce the prevalence of the dust storms in strip, stopping the loss of cropland. Uh, the Soil Erosion Service was later named the Natural Resource Conservation Service. Okay, so NRCS and USDA. Uh, in 1935, the Soil Conservation Service became an agency of the United States Department of Agriculture. Uh, Wisconsin became home to the first erosion control demonstration in the country, the Coon Creek watershed in Vernon County near La Crosse. Uh, as you can see in the photo there, the CCC camp uh, located in Coon Valley. Uh, and if we go to the next slide here, the Coon Creek watershed in Wisconsin was the first large scale erosion control demonstration site in the nation. It was 22 miles long, nine, mile, nine miles wide, uh, 92,000 acres over three counties. Uh, the outlet was directly to the Mississippi River. Uh, there, the science and arts of soil conservation to protect our land, water, food, and nation was born. Uh, in this photo, if we go back one slide, that's the Mansky Ridge uh, in 1934. There is contour strip, cost, strip cropping, uh, where this one of the showcase practices for this watershed. Okay, so bringing us up to agency involvement today. Today, NRCS serves on a larger platform. Uh, private lands account for 70% of the total land in the United States, 80% in Wisconsin. Uh, NRCS provides technical and financial assistance to land uses, including cropland, forest, pasture, and farmsteads. On um, this next slide, I'll be highlighting the ways NRCS helps private landowners through technical and financial assistance. Okay, so technical assistance, NRCS staff uh, assist uh, landowners and operators uh, to solve, or in better ways to say, address uh, resource concerns on their uh, land. Uh, we help producers maintain and improve private lands and their management, protect and improve water quality and quantity, uh, maintain and improve wildlife and fish habitats, explore opportunities to diversify agricultural operations and develop sustainable agricultural systems. NRCS assists landowners with USDA program eligibility and program signups, identifying resource needs and addressing these needs with conservation planning, design and installation of conservation systems. Uh, additional to technical assistance, financial assistance is available with NRCS. Uh, provided through the Farm Bill. The Farm Bill is passed by Congress approximately every five years. The Farm Bill authorization uh, provides for NRCS to uh, allow for environment, excuse me, voluntary programs, uh, education and outreach, assistance available to all size and type of operations that meet eligibility. The USDA is an equal opportunity provider, employer, and lender. Common financial assistance programs through the Farm Bill. Uh, so two common programs that many producers may be familiar with. Uh, conservation Stewardship Program, known as CSP, and Environmental Quality Incentives Program, known as EQIP. Additional programs include RCPP, which is the Regional Conservation Partnership Program, where NRCS works with conservation partners for the added contributions. Uh, a CEP, Agriculture Conservation Easement Program, provides easement opportunities for agricultural land and watersheds. And RCS provides technical assistance to the commonly known CRP, uh, which is the Conservation Reserve Program, 
and NRCS works to provide financial assistance through watershed initiatives. Uh, please consult your local NRCS office to learn more about initiatives available in your area. All right, so when uh, NRCS looks at problems to solve or areas where we can improve uh, in landscape, uh, it's a common question for NRCS is how projects are structured. Uh, in the following presentation by Dana, we'll take a deeper look at the project implementation side of conservation. When a loan, excuse me, when a landowner or operator contacts the NRCS office, generally they have a problem they'd like to address or they see an area of land in which they can improve. NRCS staff look at these opportunities as solving resource concerns. Some common soil and water resource concerns of Northwest Wisconsin are listed. They include soil erosion by wind and water and soil health measures, including compaction and organic matter depletion. Examples of water resource concerns include nutrient runoff to ground and surface water, pathogens and chemicals from newer or biosolids to ground and surface water, as well as sediment transferred, transported to surface water. Uh, in addition to soil and water, NRCS addresses animal plant and animal plant, air, and energy resource concerns. Animal concerns include habitat for wildlife, such as monarch or rough grouse habitat areas, as well as forage, re forage resource concerns for livestock operations. Plant concerns include plant structure in woodlands and invasive species control. Air and energy resource concerns often address in farmsteads uh, where an NRCS staff member may be helping a producer with energy effic efficiency in their equipment and facilities. Conservation practices are utilized to address the resource concern. Uh, common practices in Northwest Wisconsin include on cropland, cover crops, no-till, nutrient management, and grass waterways, uh, on pasture, prescribed grazing rotations, livestock pipeline, fence, and forage plantings. Uh, in the forest land, common practices include obtaining forest management plans, forest stand improvement practices such as pruning or select cutting overstocked stands, and brush management to reduce species like invasive buckthorn. On farmstead, many engineering practices are completed, including waste facility closures, um, which are better known as manure pit closures, as well as heavy use area protection and farmstead energy improvements. Some unique practices that NRCS can help implement include hoop houses, stream bank restoration, monarch butterfly plantings, and management practice offered to support sugar bush operations. Please note that these are common practices highlighting every conservation practice uh, wouldn't be possible in one presentation. So definitely if you have an idea, um, please consider uh, NRCS assistance. There may be an opportunity for you. Taking a look at Wisconsin implementation by the numbers. Uh, these numbers are based off of NRCS records from fiscal year 2020. Uh, in Wisconsin, we had over 660,000 acres of conservation applied to improve environmental quality. Over 460,000 acres of conservation applied to improve water quality. Uh, nearly 400,000 acres of cropland with conservation applied to improve soil quality and over 63 million provided through conservation programs to private lands. All right, and so NRCS structure and opportunities uh, for involvement. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, uh, I wanted to take a few minutes to highlight NRCS structure in Wisconsin and involvement opportunities. Uh, if anyone is listening from out of state, please know that the NRCS structure in your state may be a little different from Wisconsin, but uh, you can always reach out for NRCS offices or NRCS website for details about your state's organization. All right, so Wisconsin Service Centers. This Wisconsin NRCS team is structurally organized into four areas. Uh, you can see on the map here, Northwest, Northeast, Southwest, and Southeast sections. Uh, there are 53 service centers, four area offices, and a state office. This map's a little difficult to read virtually, so I zoomed in on the next version here on Northwest Wisconsin. 
Uh, most counties have a direct field office in their county. However, some field offices cover multiple counties. To highlight a few in the Northwest area in the St. Croix watershed area, uh, the Spooner field office covers Burnett, Washburn and Sawyer counties. In Balsam Lake field office is Polk County. In Baldwin field office is St. Croix County. If you have any questions on where your office may be located, uh, you can as always let us know as well in the Q&A chat. All right, so our network of conservation, uh, NRCS works through a true network of field offices and our partners. Uh, we're locally led through conservation committees at the county level and departments. Um, in addition, we look at partnership agreements with partners like Rough Grouse Society and Pheasants Forever. One way the public can take part in this network of conservation is through involvement with lo local work groups. Okay, so local work groups of Wisconsin. Uh, this is a snapshot of Northwest Wisconsin here. Local work groups are a subcommittee of our state technical committee. Uh, they are areas for opportunity for the public to provide input on local and state priorities and criteria for conservation activities and programs. NRCS local work groups are available for the public to provide input on local conservation. Uh, to highlight a few in the Northwest area here, Scenic Rivers Work Group consists of Douglas, Bayfield, Ashland, Iron, Burnett, Washburn, and Sawyer counties. Uh, Northwest Central Work Group includes Polk, Barron, Russ, St. Croix, and Dunn counties. And the Northwest Drip Driftless Work Group includes uh, counties such as Pierce, Pepin, Buffalo, and Trempolo. Okay, and so within a local work group many meeting, NRCS will seek information from discussion-based questions. Uh, question examples would be, what trends in local agriculture and forestry production do people see occurring within the local work group area? Uh, what are the major resource concerns by land use that need to be addressed? Uh, which practices should be encouraged to address those resource concerns? And finally, as well with our source water protection areas, are there source water areas within the local group that should be addressed? Additional opportunities, so involvement uh, can in include volunteering with the earth team as uh, that's another opportunity for volunteers who want to set their hours and what projects they would like to assist NRCS staff with. Uh, attending field days and other public outreach events, hopefully as we get further into 2021 and the upcoming years, so there'll be more opportunities for public outreach events, uh, attending field days, and those can include things from pasture walks to soil health on cropland field days and forestry walkovers. So if there is an opportunity that you're looking to be involved in or just wanna find out more, uh, definitely NRCS field offices can provide that. Okay, so this is my final slide. Uh, of course, questions we'll save to the end of Dana's presentation. If you have any questions on um, directly with the structure of NRCS, uh, Wisconsin NRCS website is definitely a great place to find more information. Um, we're looking forward to uh, this upcoming summer, getting out in the field and providing technical assistance where we can for landowners and operators. And so with that, uh, I'm turn it over to Dana. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. While Michelle is bringing up the um, second part of our presentation, I just wanted to say thank you um, for listening in. I'm excited to present the next section of our presentation. Um, 
like Michelle said, we're all excited that spring is here and we're, we'll be able to get out in the field again soon. <clears throat> um, the next section I'll be talking about conservation practice implementation in the St. Croix watershed. Uh, a little bit about my background. I've worked in a couple offices throughout the state, um, worked in Southwest Wisconsin for a little bit, worked in Nielsville for a while, and also in Luxembourg, Wisconsin. And as Kate mentioned, now I'm working in the Baldwin Field Office in St. Croix County and also help out in Polk County. Not yet. I grew up on a dairy farm in Southwest Wisconsin, and that's where um, my love for conservation came in. And uh, I'm uh, proud to be able to help other farmers um, implement their goals on um, their farms. Is it coming up? Michelle's getting the the presentation up and going. There we go. There it is. Great. Thanks, Michelle. So have you ever wondered what the landowners and operators in your local community are doing to help protect natural resources? We are excited to show you some of the ways they are voluntarily preserving our resources for future generations. <clears throat> so we would, <clears throat> excuse me. We would now like to highlight the positive results of conservation practices implemented in the St. Croix watershed. We have two examples. The first will be a cropland example of French Shoe Farms, where we will discuss their farm objectives their practices implemented, and the results of their transition to soil health practices. And in our second example, it will be a forestry example of GP Forest LLC, where I will outline the NRCS planning process and review the results of the implemented NRCS conservation plan. <clears throat> We will be reviewing how conservation practices implemented on cropland and forest land help conserve our natural resources. So um, French Shoe Farms is a large dairy operation with 1,200 cows and 1,000 young suck. They operate 3,300 acres in Polk County, Wisconsin. They grow corn silage, alfalfa, and soybeans. <clears throat> Um, so on the next slide, um, French Shoe Farms objectives, they decided about four years ago, they realized they really wanted to focus on preserving soil for future generations, managing manure better to help prevent runoff, and protecting water quality. Back then, the farm was operating with three different crop rotations, which included a continuous corn silage rotation with continuous full tillage, a corn silage followed by hay with continuous full tillage rotation, and a corn soybean rotation with continuous full tillage as well. They were starting to see resource concerns including soil erosion, soil quality concerns, and water quality. To help them meet their goals, French U Farms decided to implement a suite of soil health practices. Those practices included continuous no-till, which has been proven to reduce soil erosion and help improve soil structure. As you can see on the slide, all the residue, the picture on the slide, all the residue left on the surface after planting really helps protect our soil from that raindrop impact. They also decided to um, drill in cereal rye cover crop after corn silage and soybeans. Cover crops help improve soil biology improve water holding capacity, and increase infiltration. They are also following a nutrient management plan, which helps prevent over application of nutrients, and 
Um, <clears throat> they imp have improved manure management techniques, which helps prevent runoff. Finally, they are also using nitrogen stabilizers to help prevent nitrogen losses. These are practices that create a soil health management system that will increase resiliency, sustainability, and productivity for years to come. <clears throat> practices that are part of a soil health management system are a big focus in NRCS Wisconsin. We aim to help farmers keep soils productive and sustainable. When I asked Greg of French U Farms what advice he would give to farmers considering transitioning to soil health practices, he said um, communication with local farmers implementing the same practices is key. They can really help give tips to success. He also mentioned that adopting cover crops at the same time as no-till really helps with the transition um, as you adjust to the no-till system. The photo on the slide showed how rye cover crops provide excellent soil cover to help reduce erosion and protect water quality. <clears throat> After just four years, French U Farms is noticing a big difference on his operation. Before implementing soil health practices, he noticed the drainage ditches on his farm would run after a two inch rainfall event. So he was seeing a lot of runoff. But after implementing his um, soil health practices, his drainage ditches are now dry even with four inch rainfall events. So he's seeing a lot more infiltration. Also, his soil had very little earthworm activity before implementing no-till and cover crops. And now um, the earthworm activity is noticeably increased. And finally, on a field, a highly erodible field that with a corn soybean rotation and continuous tillage, they were seeing 17 tons per acre per year of soil loss. Where um, once the no-till and cover crops came into play, that same field now is showing a soil loss of two tons per acre per year. So as you can see, these practices are making an impactful difference on our natural resources. For our next example, we would like to outline the planning process NRCS uses to assist landowners in meeting their goals. <clears throat> the process includes three phases, starting with phase one, where we um, go through steps one through four. Step one is to identify the problems. Step two is to determine the landowner objectives. Step three is to inventory the resources, and step four is to analyze the resource data. Moving on to phase two, steps five, six, and seven, is where we formulate alternatives, evaluate alternatives, and then make decisions. And then finally, in phase three, is steps eight and nine, where we implement the plan and evaluate the results. So our final example is a forestry success story in Polk County, the GP Forest LLC property. This project was on a 160 acre family owned woodlot that has been in the managed forest law program for 63 years. It's located in the Staples Creek Apple River watershed in Polk County, Wisconsin and had several past management activities, including stand improvement harvests, managing for aspen regeneration, and access control to help prevent invasive species. Unfortunately, on July 19, 2019, straight line winds caused tree loss and damage, making the property inaccessible. Kent of GP Forest LLC contacted Keith Zigowicz, the NRCS conservationist in Polk County, after hearing from a friend, NRCS may be able to offer him some assistance. <clears throat> So starting with step one, the problem identified by the producer was the storm damage creating um, no access points to the property, an unfavorable tree regeneration environment, and salvageable timber that needed to be removed from the property. In step two, the landowner stated that his objectives were to remove fuel to prevent wildfire, 
salvage as much forest product as possible, allow natural regeneration in severely damaged stands, and prevent insect damage. Um, the next steps are three and four, where we inventory and analyze resource data. In this case, we inventory the resources in several ways, including reviewing the existing forest management plan in order to get a background on the management that's been completed previously, as well as an idea about the different types of stands in the forest. We also would analyze special considerations using planning tools to ensure we consider the big picture. Some of the special considerations would be reviewing soils maps to check for soil types and wet soils, um, completing cultural resources reviews and threatened and endangered species reviews to be aware of those considerations in the area, um, distance to surface water and topography maps. All of these considerations help us be aware of all resources needing protection and improvement. Then we would also conduct a site visit. In this case, NRCS and the family worked with a professional forester to help assess the damage of the stand. In addition, during NRCS's site visit, they identified an erosion resource concern at the stream crossing and forest trail sites. These are some examples of tools we use to evaluate and analyze resource data during steps three and four. The tools include our storm damage assessment tool, which helps determine um, the extent of the damage. Also, we would review the forest trails and landings tool to determine the best way to manage those areas and we would review the existing forest management plan, um, like I said before, to help us get a background on the property. <clears throat> the results of the inventory and analysis are recorded in multiple ways. Um, here on the screen, you can see an example of a stand assessment that was completed by the forester. We would also use maps, as shown here, with um, to designate the areas of most concern, and um, photos, as shown on the next example, to document the existing conditions on site. These photos help show the damage caused by the storm. As you can see, the damage was significant. This is the site where heavy equipment needed to cross the stream in order to clean storm damage. Sedimentation would be a concern without a stream crossing present. To wrap up steps three and four, we analyze the results of the inventory and analysis to determine the resource concerns on the property. The resource concerns were determined to be undesirable plant productivity and health, with damage of up to 90% in some areas of the woodlot, <clears throat> as well as the trees that were blown down would prevent natural regeneration. And also water quality due to sedimentation risk being high due to traffic going through the stream. So moving on to steps five and six, formulate and evaluate alternatives. Um, as you can see, the family considered many practices and alternatives to achieve their objectives, including stream crossing, forest stand improvement, woody residue treatment, forest trails and landings, tree planting for re regeneration, and access control. <clears throat> they also considered different alternatives to help meet their objectives. The alternatives were using technical assistance from NRCS and advice to complete the project on their own, or applying for the EQIP program to also receive financial assistance to complete the project. Um, they considered um, either using tree planting to help with regeneration or create using the woody residue treatment practice to create a natural regeneration environment. And they considered um, implementing access control to help prevent spread of invasive species. 
So in step seven and eight, decisions are made and implemented. Kent's decision was to apply for the following practices through the EQIP program. Woody residue treatment, forest trails and landings, forest and improvement, and stream crossing. NRCS records decisions in a conservation plan document. An example of the conservation plan document is shown on the screen. It outlines where practices are scheduled, the extent scheduled, and when they are planned to be completed. To help landowners implement the plan, NRCS provides job sheets that outline steps to implement the practices. This is the forest stand improvement job sheet, which outlines species targeted and planned stand results. This is the woody residue treatment job sheet, which explains the requirements of implementing the practices. This slide shows an example of the forest trails and landing job sheet and also a page from the stream crossing design. So when it came time to implementing the project, Kent described himself as a project coordinator. He wanted the project to be completed by the book. He made sure the project stayed on schedule, monitored progress, and ensured timely completion. <clears throat> so um, the next slide will show photos of the implementation results. In the first two photos, um, you will see the resulting stream crossing. The stream crossing was constructed by first excavating the crossing area, then placing geotextile in the crossing footprint. Next, an eight inch thick layer of graded rock was placed over the geotextile. And finally, the rock surface was compacted by equipment travel to make sure that the topmost layer of rock is at the same level or below the stream bed immediately up and downstream of the crossing. The next photo will show a close up of that crossing. And photo number three um, shows the progress of the professional foresters marking the boundaries of the land and marking various trees to be harvested and um, what it looked like while they were harvesting, the foresters left, the loggers left seed trees, den trees, and snakes for wildlife and regeneration. The cutting was done from August to mid-November. The next couple of photos show the tops and slash from the harvest that were crushed and depressed to a low level to allow for rapid decay. This allows young trees to survive. The final photo, when harvest was completed, the trail system was graded and seeded with native grasses to help hold the soil and stabilize the trail system. So the results are improved plant condition due to damaged and salvable trees, salvageable trees being removed and the canopy being opened up to allow for natural regeneration and improved water quality due to the stream crossing being stabilized to prevent sedimentation and the forest trails being receded after the logging operation to further prevent erosion and sedimentation. In evaluating the plan, Kent stated, the logging operation maximized timber taken and created the environment for self-regeneration. NRCS's help was immeasurable, he said. His objectives were met and the forest is now set for recreational use and timber regeneration. I also um, asked Keith Sigwicks, the DC from the Polk County office, his uh, evaluation of how the plan went. He stated that this project could not have been as successful as it was without the involvement of the landowner, professional forester, and the thoughtful logging crew throughout the planning, application, and implementation process. He also stated the stream crossing was vital to the project to provide needed access and prevent sedimentation runoff into the nearby lake. <clears throat> 
Keith said that Kent's timely contact with NRCS helped facilitate the project's success. So, um, in closing, I wanted to say that conservation work in the St. Croix watershed is making a positive impact on our natural resources. The NRCS planning process allows us to work together with partners and loaners, landowners to help implement conservation on the ground. Landowners and operators who are interested in working with NRCS to implement conservation practices on their land should call their local service center to schedule a site visit appointment. As Michelle mentioned in the first presentation, visit the NRCS website to find your local service center office location. And with that, we will open it up to questions. Thank you so much, Michelle and Dana, for taking the time to present for us today. Um, we would love for the audience to continue to drop in questions into the Q&A tab. Um, but right now we can start off with a few. Um, Michelle and Dana, are you noticing any emerging trends in conservation practices in our region? Um, Michelle, I can answer this question. Um, we definitely see a lot more interest in the um, cover crops and no-till soil health type practices. We've also seen a lot of interest in energy improvement practices and um, and a lot of erosion control practices as well. Great. Uh, how much land do you need to own in order to get assistance from NRCS? Does it need to be a certain percentage of cropland or forest land to be accepted? Uh, so I can take that question. So uh, as far as USDA eligibility, um, you know, if you have a small project, that's definitely something we can still assist with if you don't have you know, a large acreage that's not, we're not looking for minimum acreage in, in regards to our conservation programs. Um, you know, and I say the biggest thing, especially with technical assistance, definitely if you have any questions, it's always open for us to um, come out to your site. Uh, you know, everything is voluntary based. And so having a, an RCS uh, staff member come out to the site is always the first uh, base step that I would say that I recommend for all landowners. Uh, once you get that initial step in, uh, then we can talk about what acreage you'd like to enroll. If, it's a, if it is a small acreage, uh, there's definitely opportunities for you. Uh, there's no, you know, there's no magic number that we're looking for. We're really looking for projects big and small. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, where should I go again to learn more about if my land is right for NRCS assistance? You could share that um, contact resource or website again. Yes, yeah, so um, if you go to the Wisconsin NRCS webpage, um, you will find, I think there's like a office locator link that you can find um, your county office location. Great. And then uh, does NRCS provide consulting services to residential landowners? Um, we normally, it depends on the, um, it depends on the situation really. The best way to assess your individual situation would be to call NRCS and um, your local office and they'll be able to let you know how we can help and even if our programs um, aren't available we would always be willing to offer um, technical assistance and advice and insight on how to manage your property um, to meet your goals. Wonderful. So it looks like we are reaching the end of the questions that have been submitted. So if you're typing in a question into the Q&A, um, let's try to finish that up shortly so we can have 
uh, Dana and Michelle respond to that. Give it another few seconds here. Okay, I'm not seeing anything else come through, so um, we can start wrapping up. Um, I would like to say another thank you to our presenters and then as well as our viewers today um, for joining us. Um, uh, we're coming to the end of the session now, but please note that you will have a short break before the next session begins with Tia Nelson speaking at 2.30 p.m. Um, we we uh, wish you all a great rest of your conference and today and um, Again, if you need any more NRCS contact information, um, some of it is provided in your session window right now and otherwise reach out. Thank you so much, Dana and Michelle.